Okay, so thank you for joining The Average Golfer uh, for another day, full day of videos that will be released. And it is this time after the Mammoth Day yesterday. It is all about Callaway. They've followed up TaylorMade releases yesterday with, uh, we've got two new drivers, we've got some fairway woods. What else have we got? We've got some irons to come as well, but we're starting off with the big release. It is the Epic Flash driver. Flash uh, Sub-Zero as well drive we'll look at in this video. Um, two big, big releases. Um, first things first, let's throw some images up on screen for you now to get you in the feel of how this thing looks. What do you think of the name actually? Before I go there, Flash, Epic Flash, I'm not keen on that one I'm afraid. Come on Callaway, we can come up with something a bit better than that. I just, I don't know, I'm not keen on that at all. But anyway, that aside, we've got the looks of this thing. now. If I throw the images up on front, the one notable difference is it retains its colouring. I'm gonna grab it to my hand now so I can talk about it. It retains the green colourings that we're familiar with, with the Epic. And they've thrown in this flash of yellow, which for me, I must admit on first looks, I was a little bit taken aback with. It was an odd colour to put up with that green. I'm not overly keen on it, if I'm honest with you. Uh, it throws up the first thought, I thought of was the Jamaican flag and I've got nothing against the Jamaican flag but it was an odd colouring maybe that's the thing it's all to do with speed is that uh, well, are we thinking Usain Bolt here I don't know but aside from that little bit of colouring difference the chrome finish and the uh, the weighting system along the back it oozes quality if I'm honest with you quality in terms of the build it is really really well put together I love the weight system, just this one sliding weight from a fade to draw bias they've put in the back. Um, it looks to me, like I said, solidly built and the most solid built weight system that I have seen. Everything about this high polished chrome, it kind of oozes quality from that bottom uh, line and shelf appeal. But then when you turn the club over, which is the bit that we're interested in when you sit it behind the ball, it is absolutely stunning. I have to say it's one of the best looking drivers in terms of the crown that I have I have seen behind a golf ball. Um, they've changed it slightly. Half of the club of the crown is this gloss, high gloss black finish and the back half is this carbon imprint uh, sort of almost faded out and then there's this little uh, yellow and green uh, stripes, the go faster stripes that they've put in there and obviously the Callaway Chevron is there on the head for all to see. It looks absolutely beautiful. Anyway, your thoughts on uh, that first of all but the big story is not about looks it's not about the name or is it about the name it's about flash face and what is flash face but more importantly how did it get designed because it wasn't designed by the normal human intelligence it's all about artificial intelligence Callaway have built their efforts have gone into building a supercomputer and for the computer to come up with the design of flash face and it's a big, big story. It's a big, big difference than what we've ever seen before. And it's quite surprising. I'll throw you some images up very, very shortly, which will surprise you as to how this thing has been put together. But the deal is this, the computer looked at sort of 15,000 different permutations, algorithms, I suppose you might want to call them, as to the best way in which they could build a club face to perform alongside jailbreak. The jailbreak technology is still in these drivers, obviously alongside the crown, alongside the weighting system, how would the how could they build the best possible face to promote fast ball speeds from centre-ish hits? So they're not looking all across the club face as they see in the story yesterday. It's very much still about looking at the centre, producing the very best ball speeds out the centre-ish of this face. Uh, pardon uh, my uh, explanation of the centre-ish hits. You can think of something a bit better than that. But what they came up with was this. Look at these four club faces that are put in front of you now. This is the best explanation I can give because from a visual, it is a real eye opener. The three faces that you can see are generally been built with the X in the middle there that you can see the X face. You can see there that they predominantly have always been thicker piece of material in the center of the face and gradually getting thinner towards the uh, perimeter. Now then, flash face is totally different to that. And what the computer built was something of varying degrees of thickness throughout the whole club face. So not in the centre, not the perimeter, throughout the whole club face. So the wave effect that you can see there is the varying thicknesses of material throughout that whole club face. And that's what, after all this testing, 
that is what the computer came up with. Artificial intelligence designed that club face as the best possible performing face coupled with all the other technology it's packed into this uh, club head. So did it work? Well, there was only one way to find out, it was get out there on the fairways and also collect some dry ball data. Now on the fairways, like I said, for me, I went out and hit quite a few golf balls, played a couple of rounds with this thing. Um, I hit both drivers off the same position on a number of occasions. It sits lovely behind the ball, like I said, very confidence inspiring. I love the epic driver, however I was a bit wayward with it. Have they managed to uh, curb that waywardness and assist me a little bit? I don't know, we'll find out shortly. Um, it seems to go for miles, it seems to go very high, again very high ball flight, I've seen that in the drivers um, that have been released in the last couple of days, very high ball flight for the uh, loft that is on the club, this is a 9 degree loft that I was using, a blue uh, stiff tensai um, shaft, very high ball flight, I played really really well with it, what can I say, it seemed to carry for a long long way and, and sort of I went out on there on the course to see how it performed to my eye rather than be persuaded by dry ball data so I'm trying to change that where I form my own opinion first rather than perhaps be guided by what dry ball data tells me so we went then into four golf Chester once again started to hit some balls get a feel for this thing warm up a little bit and the numbers are up in front of you now um, 16.7 launch like I said quite high especially when you consider this nine degrees worth of loft uh, fantastic spin number that launch and a 2-2 spin number at 36 peak height once again like I said getting up and out there and an average carrier 241 once again not the longest drives I've ever hit in terms of dry ball data but I would almost sort of I think dry ball data is great to back up numbers like spin and launch but the reality is what did it do out on the course and go back to how it performed there and both versions oddly enough and i'll throw actually i better throw up the that was the um the standard driver i'll throw up the sub-zero numbers for you now now the sub-zero first of all if you have a look better ball speed so 142 ball speed it launched at a lower which again you'd expect it to do from this model launched an average at 15 degrees spin came down um to 2000 and a couple just dropped below again peak height lower and a 246 carry if you're choosing between the two in terms of performance looking at dry ball data you'd certainly say the dry uh, that the um, sub-zero model was better for me personally in terms of dry ball data and i think it was bore out there on the course as well um, I certainly found for me, and I've not found this before, is that the Sub-Zero model performed better for me. And um, they, excuse me, the overall assessment of the two clubs would be simple. I think that they've combined the best of both worlds in terms of Rogue and Epic, and it's now into one driver because I thought Epic was a better driver in terms of sound, feel, overall performance and Rogue. I found Rogue a little bit dull at times in terms of its sound. And, but it was far better in terms of dispersion. I think what they've managed to do here is combine the two. Flash face technology, in terms of ball speeds, there were some decent ball speeds coming off there. We need a closer look, and I've said this in, uh, in other videos I've done recently, I'm gonna spend more time taking a closer look of comparables between where I struck this uh, ball on the club face in relation to club uh, ball speed uh, and that needs a lot more time than I've had so far and that way we can get a closer idea on just how much impact this flash face is having on performance on uh, centre slightly off centre hits and we can have a bit of a closer look at that I haven't got the time to have done that into this video so the overall assessment would be this uh, like I said better combination in terms of sound and feel perform really really well it, and I say really, really well, the, the, the way I'm going to leave this video is simple. In the weeks ahead, and I think, like I said, to give an honest and overall assessment of these type of clubs, you need longer. You need to play more out on the course with them. I need to play three, four, five, six rounds of golf for me to be able to give you um, a fuller, for me to get a fuller understanding of the club, to see some more averages, how often I perform well or not with it. And you don't get that time between the time you get the club and the embargo date. I'm afraid that's the, the simple logistics of it all. So I'll do more testing with it. What I would say at this stage, this is a real possibility that I would game that club over my G400 Max. 
G400 Max has been nowhere. It's never been shifted in the last 12 months. This is a club that I would consider um, that if it performs the way it has done so far, if I could do that consistently over a number of rounds, then I would consider putting this in the bag. That's how good this thing has performed. So I'm gonna leave it there. That's the end of this review at this stage. It's my first look, but there will be more to come on this driver, I can assure you. I'm gonna do some more testing, better testing, more detailed testing, really, so I can find out if it's a club worth gaming for me or not. Anyway, thank you for watching. Your comments down below, as ever. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, for those of you who have not watched this before, I am the average golfer. My handicap is eight, nine. Changed a little bit, but I'm, I'm in and around there. And I, my performance that you've seen in terms of dry ball data, my assessment is very much from that handicap level. Uh, so take it for what you will. Most important thing is get out there and try them for yourself. And that shouldn't be too far away actually, um, in the shops very, very shortly. And then come back, revisit this video and post some comments when you give it a go for yourselves. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. Happy New Year.